Okay, the fly I'm going to tie is a midge emerger. And I've kind of done a lot of experimentation with midges, and I had a very difficult time catching fish on midges for a long time. And part of the reason was because I was fishing adult midges, and most of the experimentation I've done with emergers showed me that fish are taking emergers in the surface film, or they're taking emergers just underneath the surface film, but not taking very many adult midges. So all of the midges that I tie now are emerger patterns. And this is a midge emerger. So we'll start our thread about halfway up the hook. And this fly, by the way, is tied on a 102Y, which is an odd-sized hook. I'm tying it a little larger than I would fish today, just for, so it's easier to see. Uh, I tie these all the way down to size 30s and fish them into size 30s, so it's a fly that's, that's real versatile that way. Uh, the shuck on this is a Calabatus colored Antron with a lot of shine in it. We'll take and just make a pin trap, lock that down, and pull the Antron dubbing back, wrap over the top of it. It looks like a lot of shuck material. But when it gets wet, it shrinks down. It looks real natural in the water. We cover that real good with thread. The abdomen for this fly is kind of the attraction to it, I think. And for that, I use black flashaboo. Since this is a little bit larger fly, I'll take a few strands. On the smaller ones, it usually only takes one strand. And the way I start this is the kind of the way you would tie in rubber legs is split it in half, just slide it along the thread, and then you can move it anywhere on the hook that you would like. So I'll tie it down, wrap back over it. We'll take our flash of boo, wrap it forward. You can see it gives off real nice shine to it. Tie that off with a couple wraps. Now I have some personal eyesight issues, and so one of the things I am constantly thinking about is being able to see flies on the water. And if I'm fishing real small flies, I've got to have some point in the fly that uh, allows me to see it out there. And uh, for this fly, the wing on it, I use a poly, poly material for its floatability and also it has some sheen to it so I can see it out there. I don't like white in my wings, so I like colors that are off-white. Maybe that, whether that be a light dun, or in this case, this is actually a tan, and it, it looks white way out on the water, but it's a little softer color than, than just white. Now to make this wing, um, I'm going to use kind of a technique that people used to use to make hopper bodies. And that's by twisting it in opposite directions, it'll fold over on itself. Just a little bit more. So I'll take some of that and we'll twist it opposite directions and it will just fold over into a loop. I'm going to take that loop and hold it down. Once again, I'm going to pinch wrap it, pull it down onto the hook, make it just a couple of loose wraps, 
The reason for the loose wraps is now I can take and position it however I want it. Trim that off, cover up those ends, and I usually take and put a wrap behind it, make it stand up just a little bit, and then one right at the base of it. And there's the wing. Next I'm going to tie in the hackle. And for this fly, I'm going to use a speckled badger. I like speckled badger for a lot of purposes. If you don't have speckled badger, grizzly is fine, or a, a dun colored wing also works well, or a dun colored hackle works well. The thorax in this is going to be peacock. So I'm going to clip out a couple of peacock fibers, clip off the tips, go ahead and tie those in. And we'll wrap those forward carefully because they're pretty fragile. And I'm going to take a couple wraps with the hackle through the peacock and tie that off. Half hitch. Come back in and whip finish. Last, last thing I'm going to do is come back and clip out my shuck to length. And there's the finished fly. Also, a lot of times I'll come in and clip a V on the bottom of this so that rides flat in the surface film. <coughs> 